Yeah. Thank you. Hello, my name is Park. I'm from South Korea. Um, uh, I'm, today I'm going to talk about most networking stack, which is a, a specialized uh, networking stack for TCP processing. TCP processing um, middle boxes on top of DPDK. This is a joint work with my students and uh, my colleague, uh, Dong Soo Han. Actually, uh, Young Kim Moon is here. He is one of the, uh, the active developers. So if you have any questions, please ask him. So let me just introduce Middlebox. What is a Middlebox? Middlebox is the devices that provide some extra functionalities. It's different from the L2, L3 uh, devices that provide packet forwarding and routing. Other than that, other than packet forwarding and routing, all the other network devices called middle boxes. What are the examples? You are all familiar with this, like network registration, translation, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, privacy systems, etc. Right? And these middle boxes are, are increasingly popular. So it's ubiquitous. So the number of middle boxes at one uh, enterprise is actually similar to the number of routers. And then uh, it's very prevalent in uh, cellular networks. And we also talk a lot about that the functions are uh, virtualization. And then SDN actually controls those uh, network functions. And I see these network functions are actually middle boxes. Why are they popular? Because they provide key functionalities uh, that have, have been kind of ignored in the design of original uh, internet. So what? Security, load balancing, uh, caching, etc. But if you look at the uh, recent trend, like most middle boxes actually deal with TCP traffic. Because TCP dominates uh, the internet. Not over 95% of the old traffic is actually is TCP. So there are, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, not surprisingly, there are lots of uh, TCP flow processing middle boxes, like stateful firewalls, uh, protocol analyzers, uh, cellular data that can be done, we talk about soon, intrusion detection, prevention, even net, that to address translation, right? They need to, they need to keep track of the flows. Why? So it looks like a packet level uh, middle box. But actually, they need to do uh, flow management because they want to block unwanted packets, right? Packets that don't, don't belong to any of the active connections. You need to block them, right? Problem is that the maintaining TCP state, like writing TCP state management, actually, is very complex and error prone. So let me give an example. Let's say we need to write a uh, middle box. Uh, cellular data accounting system. So inside the cellular ISP, you need to have a, a system that accounts for the usage for each uh, subscriber, right? So, but unfortunately, there's no uh, open source project about that, right? So you need to write that. But when you think about it, the actual logic, actual logic is very simple. For every packet, IP packet, you need to find the subscriber. You need to account for it, account for the length of the packet. It's very simple. But well, what about retransmission? Okay. Uh, Korea is very accurate. <laughs> so we don't want the retransmission package to be accounted for the user. Because the retransmission happens because of the packet loss. And packet loss happens due to the kind of lack of provisioning of the infrastructure. Right? So if it's not retransmitted, then you're comforting. That's good. But then that gives us security problems. If, you, if it's not really implemented well. So uh, we actually did this TCP, uh, TCP tunneling step. So you make a packet look like uh, rich transmission. And inside the payload, you have another packet, right? So that actually works, worked on all of the three ISPs in South Korea. So for accurate uh, the accounting, actually, you need to do, you need to attack, uh, uh, you need to detect it. Uh, if it's, uh, uh, if, packet is rich transmitted, then you need to see the payload and the, uh, see whether the payload actually matches that the previous payload. And if it's not, then you, you can uh, re-report the abuse. Okay? Uh, so logically, still, it's a very simple uh, process. But the, the question comes down to how to implement it. Right? The core logic, if you think about the implementation, is to determine if the packet is rich transmitted or not. And then you need to remember some of the previous packets original uh, payload. Maybe you can do some sampling of random locations and then you can uh, compare them, right? The key logic here is uh, TCP flow management, right? How to implement this? So maybe you can just borrow it from somewhere else. 
So you can borrow the code from open source IDS and choose the detection system like uh, Snort and Suricata, they do uh, manage the, uh, manage the uh, flows. But the problem is that the, these codes are like uh, 50, 50 to 100,000 uh, lines of code. It's very tightly coupled with their uh, IDS logic. Very, so it's very uh, difficult to detach only the, the part of you. Another option maybe is to borrow the code from the kernel because they implement this type of step. But the problem is that the kernel is a full warning. And the middle box sits in the middle. So you need to actually manage both directions, right, differently. So it's the, it lacks the middle box, uh, middle box uh, semantics. So what's the common practice? What's the uh, state of the art? State of the, uh, the state of art is the, uh, the uh, DIY, do it yourself, right? Implement your own flow management from scratch. Of course, the problem is that you need to repeat it for every custom middle box, right? So, but and this, if you think about other applications like uh, TCP and host applications, there is a nice uh, division between the application logic and uh, TCP, stack, TCP IP stack logic. That's why, that's because we have nice abstraction called uh, Berkeley Circuit API. Okay? It provides nice abstraction that actually separates the TCP flow management in the uh, L2, L3, L4 layers from the application layer, L, L, L7 layer. Right? Of course, you can write better code if you know TCP tunnels, but it never requires to write the TCP state stuff to write the uh, like end host <laughs> TCP application. But if you look at the middle boxes, TCP middle box, everything is intermixed. Like middle box logic itself, the pattern matching, uh, or pa packet processing, flood track uh, tracking, the like metadata tracking, and the flow reassembly. So if you look at some of the uh, open source codes, at least, it's sort of staggering, right? So how do you solve this problem? So to solve this problem, we present a new step called a uh, most network stack. Uh, the basic idea is that we write, we provide the network stack that's reusable for different kind of custom uh, application, custom middleware applications. We provide uh, programming abstraction and APIs to developers. So the key concept is here is that we, we try to separate the flow management part. We write that part for you and you use it. And then you only focus on custom logic. And then we provide event-based middlebox development uh, scheme. I'll talk about it later. And then for efficiency, uh, we actually uh, can change the, the monitoring set for each flow. So we, you can actually uh, have a different behavior for each flow. And the benefit, of course, is to provide, uh, we provide clean and modular uh, development of uh, stateful build boxes. Developers focus, only need to focus on the core logic, real uh, build box logic, instead of the flow management. And then we provide high performance, because uh, this uh, stack implementation is based on the MTCP, which is actually our, uh, our thing that uh, provides the user level TCP stack on multi cores. So, and then we, uh, that's running on top of DPDK and, and promise a good performance. So the key abstraction in MOS is that we have a socket. So it's similar to Berkeley Socket API. Uh, but it's, we call it monitoring socket, but because it represents the middle box viewpoint, not the end, end host viewpoint, right, on network structure. So it, it, you can use, you can create and uh, use the socket to monitor both TCP connections and also individual IP packets. And it provides similar uh, API to the uh, broker socket API. So if you look at this uh, picture here, uh, you, 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 you need to implement custom log logic, custom middle box logic part. So you create a uh, socket using uh, socket API and install the event. And then packets come in and then it, uh, the about most stack automatically uh, tracks the flow, and then when some interesting condition is met, that event is generated, and then it, the, you, you actually ask it your uh, event handle for uh, 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 to, to handle these events. So this, with this, we actually separate uh, flow management part, uh, the like, most, most, uh, most stack part from uh, custom middle box logic. The overall architecture looks like this. So we have a uh, shared nothing parallel architecture. So for each CPU core, we have a, a pinned thread. 
And each thread, you have your own logic, so a custom middlebox logic, and, and then it runs as well uh, along with uh, the API and then uh, socket, uh, API and uh, step. And then underlying uh, here, so you see the network card, and then we use uh, receive side scaling, RSS, it's called, and also we actually slightly changed it to, to, uh, to accept the, 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 to distribute the packets in the same connection, not just one direction, right? All like regardless, regardless of the uh, the, uh, the direction, the packets belonging to one connection are end up at the same RSQ. So we call it a uh, uh, symmetric uh, RSS. And then each core is supposed to responsible for uh, handling a fraction of the connections, independent of other cores. Okay, you don't have to share anything. Uh, between uh, these cores. So on the, inside in both stack, we do TCP flow management automatically, and then we do it, it process all the uh, packet I/O. And if there's something happens, like uh, the event, then uh, call that function is called. And then you are you are supposed to provide the handler for this uh, call that function. So underlying this uh, stack, uh, then we need to do the flow management. But flow management is very uh, interesting because uh, in middle box actually has to manage a, a dual stack, not just one stack. You need to manage the uh, TCP stack for uh, client side as well as the uh, server side, right? For example, oh, why why do you need this? Let's say a client sends a, t a SYN, SYN packet for the first time to create a connection, right? Then, uh, if you think about the client side state, it states. Uh, states changed from closed state to since sent. But in the, uh, in the server side, the state is different, right? It was, li it was listening to, uh, uh, to for, uh, uh, listening for a connection, and then it's, it's state actually changes to uh, since, since received. So, so client clients side state, uh, state and uh, server side state, uh, uh, state is actually different on the same, same packet. For example, uh, client sends a packet and it updates the uh, client side state. Then it also updates the uh, server side state and receives it. <coughs> As a response, uh, client, uh, server sends uh, packet back and then it updates the server side, server side stack and also it updates the stack. Uh, updates, the, updates the client side stack as well as the uh, receive buffer. So MOS is responsible for managing these stacks, two stacks independently, actually, and then provide the uh, the metadata to the uh, user level using one socket API. So using using your uh, one uh, uh, socket uh, uh, file system. Uh, another notable thing that we need to uh, discuss is the event. So most event is a notable condition that uh, manage uh, uh, middlebox uh, processing. So it's different from TCP socket uh, events. Like we we demand writing is is a little bit more fine. So most events actually are divided into two things. One is uh, built-in event. These are the events that happen naturally in in the process of TCP. So when packet arrives, right, it generates an event. Uh, or when the new connection starts and ends, it generates a new event. And then we also have the retransmission as um, a built-in event. So these are the events uh, generated automatically. If you want to process it, you can just simply provide the uh, event handler. But these are not enough for writing the complex ap applications. So we actually allow uh, user-defined event. You can define your own event. Okay. And uh, then uh, user-defined event is uh, using uh, is based on uh, one event, the base event, and when that base event is raised, a uh, filter function is evaluating, and then if the, if the filter function says yes, true, then that event is uh, uh, raised, and you, uh, your uh, call back function is actually uh, uh, executed. And so this way, you can actually have a nested event. You can uh, you can extend existing any any of these existing events. It couldn't be. The base event can be either built-in event or another UDE. Okay. For example, you can actually uh, catch the event for uh, HTTP request or three duplicate uh, uh, X as one event. Okay. And then with this, we actually see 
the build box will load again a stream of event and event handlers. So you write the code in, 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 uh, in terms of event and event handlers, and then everything is done. Okay? So here is some sample code. So this is a kind of a, a initialization uh, function that's created, uh, gets called by main function. And what you do is you need to create the socket, and then you, you have a filter. Now I'm interested in this kind of traffic. Like destination network starts with uh, 216.58. Uh, and that destination port is 8. All the traffic that's going, going to this destination, I'm interested. Okay, you can, and you call the bind uh, mode filter. And then you register a callback. So, and then uh, this most count start is built in event. It's generated whenever new TCP connection is, uh, is starting. And then you, you provide a callback function. So you write your action here, on flow uh, start. You can define event too. You call a uh, defined event, and that is based on this base event. So whenever there is something uh, to read, right, new, new data means that there is something to, to be read in the, in the uh, flow reassembly buffer. And then we provide a uh, filter function. Whenever this, this guy says yes, then this uh, HTTP event is generated, and then this uh, callback function is called. Okay. And then uh, filter function is like this. So this is a HTTP request filter function. Check whether this is HTTP or not. HTTP request or not. Okay. So the so main part is here. So you, you read peak means it's the same as read or receive. You read the data and then check whether there is a no to enter there. And then if it's true, then read the return true. If it's not, false. Okay. So this is the part that you write. So and how the event is generated, when, when, when sender send a packet, then actually you start, you uh, generate all the, uh, you update the sender side, TCP stack, and then you generate all the events and, and handle all the events for the sender side. And then you, do the, you repeat that for the receiver side. Receiver side, uh, uh, TCP stack updating, and then uh, event is generated to the receiver side. We try to carefully reflect what it builds to actually see and operates on. And we, that's based on the um, estimation of the sender and receiver's uh, state. We, we do the uh, sender side of update first because when, when the packet arrived at here, that means that the sender the state has already been changed. What's tricky is about this. So we actually do the pro, pro, proactive update on the receiver side even before the packet is actually received at the receiver. It might be lost here actually, right? But we, you never know. But we actually do aggressive, a little bit uh, aggressive, proactive uh, update because most of the, uh, the security appliances actually uh, do uh, take an action before the packet is actually being uh, 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 forwarded to the receiver. Okay, so in order to uh, manage the events, actually, uh, so we, everything is event trait. Event, 10, 10 minutes? Everything is event-based. So each flow has, is, subscribe, is subscribed to a set of events. So each flow can change, actually, its own set of the events. So you can uh, add up new events, change the event deleted. Okay. Then there is a, a scalability problem. So what if you have, have to handle hundreds, thousands of uh, concurrent flows, billions of concurrent flows? Then you need to, have, you need to manage lots of different uh, events. You need to follow these, that, these events in the uh, stack right. So observation here is that the uh, interesting the, the same set of events actually many, many, um, uh, monitored for multiple flips. So you don't have to have a, a many different copies. Okay. But then how to actually represent the event set for flow and how to uh, uh, efficiently find the same set of set. That's the key to solving this uh, 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 scalable event management. So here is how we represent an event. Uh, so event depend, we call this event dependence tree. It represents how a UD uh, user defined event is defined. We start from a uh, built-in event attribute. So uh, on con new data means there is something new in this connection. There's some some data, some flow resident data there. If and then there is some hierarchy. So you can define your event. 
whether this is the HTTP event, HTTP request. If it's an HTTP request, then you see whether this is YouTube. And then you provide your event handle like this. Okay? So you can have multiple of these trees. And then flow, actually, for each connection, has a set of these trees. Okay? And then if a new flow shares the same set of, same set of uh, the events, you can just point to the same root. Simple. So let's say S2 and S3 are pointing to the same set of events, okay, V3. So, and then S3 wants to add a new event, event E8, and F8 is an event handle. Okay, so, so new, new set of tree is created, and S3 now needs to point to this one. Okay? But what if S2 wants to do the same thing? Okay, so it hits the same event and then tries to add a new event. Okay, but but if you, if you think about it, this we thought already exists. The same set of events already exists. The problem is how to find how does the S two actually find there is the same tree already there. Okay. So we solve this problem by by using an identification problem. So so each event dependent tree has its own unique ID, and then we calculate the ID of a tree. Like uh, by doing some of the hashes, the one-way hash function, okay, of event ID and event handle ID. So here we have two events, E11, E10, and F, F10 is an uh, event handler. F10, uh, F, F11, and F10 are uh, event handlers for the uh, these event, okay. So uh, ID V3 is very simple hash of E11, F11, and exclusive or hash of the uh, uh, e, e10, uh, 11, uh, e10 and f10. Then the question is, how do we actually uh, calculate the new ID after adding or deleting a new node? Okay? This is very simple because uh, the new node, the new, new tree t prime of ID is the existing tree's ID, ID of t, and uh, ex exclusive over the new, new thing. E, e, F is uh, either it's being deleted or uh, added, that doesn't matter. You, you need to do just like one more, uh, one uh, XOR operation. So let's say, let's add E8, F8 to, to V3. Then new tree looks like this. And then new ID is simply the previous ID and new hash of this E8 and F8. Uh, actually, if, even if it remove this, if it, even if you remove something from the V4, you do the same operation. Because the exclusive OR has canceling effect, right? So uh, if E11, F11 was part of the V4 already, so if you do exclusive OR, that cancels it, right? So this is a uh, current set of uh, stack API. We have about 15 uh, API functions, so cat, Close. Okay. Uh, uh, this thing. Uh, you can define a new event, uh, define event, register callback, uh, etc. T is actually read. So you can read uh, the flow reassemble uh, data, and then you can get the some. You can do some uh, packet level operation. You can get the packet and uh, actually modify the packet. Uh, set uh, last packet to. You can get socket option and set socket option. I'll skip this thing. So implementation-wise, uh, so it's uh, it's per thread library on top of the MTCP implementation, which is about uh, eleven thousand lines of code of MTCP, and then we add a lot, a little bit more. And so in total, it's about uh, twenty-six thousand lines of code. It exploits uh, parallelism on multi-core systems. User defined event implementation is designed to scale, and we actually uh, try to pull a lot of uh, Existing uh, middle boxes, and it requires very small number of lines of code modification. And M uh, MDPI and Preds, they we, they do pattern matching, but they the pattern matching based on packet uh, packet based. They don't uh, do over uh, a flow reassemble of uh, data. So if you, uh, so by porting them to uh, uh, both, actually uh, automatically we do uh, stateful session management. Okay. Uh, some evaluation here, so I'll skip this uh, setup. So does it actually scale the performance on multi-cores? 
So uh, the background traffic is uh, file download, HTTP file download, and then 192,000 uh, concurrent flows are running. And each download actually uh, downloads file, either a small file or large file, 64 byte and uh, 8K. And two simple uh, applications, one is doing just counting the number of packets per flow, and this guy does searching for a, a, some string in a flow assembled uh, data. And as you can see, uh, as we increase the CPU port, actually the performance actually uh, linearly increases. And then uh, even for doing DPI, full DPI, uh, can do actually 42 gigabits per second uh, on, uh, on the Intel machine. Uh, latency, overhead by uh, both applications. If you direct connect, then it takes about 16 uh, microseconds to download 64 byte packet and about 120 microseconds to download 8K. But if you use uh, middle blocks, it adds up a little bit. Uh, 35 microseconds to uh, 7, 7 6 microseconds for uh, 8, 8 kilobyte files, so, but uh, the overhead is not that big. Uh, this shows the uh, scalability events management. And so same setup, and then if you found, if uh, the middle of uh, most application finds some, some string, it dynamically adds new event. And then it, uh, naive means that you actually create a new copy. So uh, on high speed, actually, uh, it degrades performance a lot, and then uh, most application actually uh, provides similar performance throughout the uh, number of uh, uh, different events. About yeah. 36 gigabits per second here. Yeah. Uh, I'll skip this too. The real application performance and snort, AC is uh, pattern matching uh, algorithm using air crossing. The DFC is a little bit slightly better, uh, uh, the uh, pattern matcher. Uh, but if you're using the original TCAP library, performance is not great, less than one gigabit per second. If you use DPDK, performance improves a lot because you benefit from uh, multi cores. MOS, even if you uh, port, port it to MOS, does not degrade the performance a lot. So MOS itself is not about the performance. It's about the modularity and the cleanliness, right? And then sometimes it improves performance, snort case, because the snort flow management has a little bit of efficiency. Uh, so this is done by the actual trace, 60, uh, 67 gigabytes of LTE package trace, and it actually shows 4.2 times 2. 28 times performance improvement over the existing ones. Okay, this is the last one. The fire alarm. Good. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Can I? Can I? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the current middle box development is difficult. It lacks modularity, readability, maintainability. Solution, let's have some reusable that took the step, but let's not forget about the performance, so let's use DPDK. Okay, so most stack provides nice abstraction and uh, socket-like socket -like API. If you're uh, familiar with TCP socket uh, programming, you can actually do it uh, uh, easily. Event-driven uh, middle box processing, and then we actually uh, care about uh, performance. And it's, it's open sourced. Uh, so it, uh, all the code is at, at GitHub. And we also have the online manual. We mm -hmm. try uh, uh, actually uh, spend much, a lot of time on, on writing uh, the, the API manuals here. And uh, the most pressed pages is here. So if you have any questions, uh, come to me or ask my student or, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you could go back another couple of slides due to the example you were showing. So you were saying that you were identifying a flow and then you were adding a specific callback based on flow. Uh, based on flow, you said this is a YouTube flow. And oh, okay. You added, you so added that's a, uh, uh, okay, that's an uh, event scalability thing, right? Yeah. I'll fire back a little. 
But it, it, in general, do you age and prune flows over time? Yeah, actually, I showed one, one benchmark. This, this is it. Yeah, so if you, so if everyone is sharing the same set of uh, uh, events, that's, so if you think about the middle box, one type of middle box, you, you, you won't actually require managing many different kinds of uh, the events from different, uh, different flows. So you're interested in some flow class, and then you're, you're interested in monitoring these set of events. So mostly they share. But sometimes, uh, when you hit, hit on some event, you may want to add new event. Oh, I saw some, some string, real string, and I want to uh, test against this one too, right? So it's possible that this event set may change over time. But if everyone is doing right, then it's likely that the next one will have the same, uh, same event set of the previous one, right? And then if you keep on creating a new set, Right? Instead of, of uh, looking up, then that's a waste. And then that actually degrades performance slow up if, you, if you're dealing with lots of concurrent flows. That's why we, have, we came up with this uh, uh, algorithm. It actually helps, it helps a lot. Any? I have a question on, on this slide. Okay. Um, I saw the callback for HTTP and FTP, and you are searching into the package, right? Yeah, yeah. There are things that you can do in parallel, for example, regex can do it in parallel, and, and from one regex you can know that this is HTTP. Uh, can, can you have such engines that work in parallel uh, and then the end, find yes. the nodes? Uh, in the end, you need to find, yeah, you should do some pattern matching, but yes. uh, finding a uh, HTTP request is very simple. You don't really require a uh, uh, regex, so you need to find the double enter. Yeah, the problem, right? But then, what's, what's important here is flow reassemble. Full flow reassembly is not done by you. It's automatically done by the stack. And then you can, you can read it by MTCP peak. And then you have the buffer, and then you run one string search, actually. Yeah, and then you can find You don't really require it. As the user, I want to do it in parallel. Yes, yes, everything is in parallel, actually. So we, the uh, we have I, we're about the shared nothing. Very slow. Yeah, Shares yeah. nothing parallel architecture. So each core has a thread, and each thread is doing the exact same thing independently of each other. They are uh, they are processing a different set of uh, connections. For, for example, the HTTP check that you did, you uh, you search into the buffer that you already built, right? But I want in, in the case of HTTP example that you showed, okay, you, okay. you you look into the buffer that you already built on top of uh, TCP. Right. right. You did the retransmission and you did everything. But what I'm I'm looking for as a user is to do some regex or some parallel engine that do it for many many nodes and then decide after one operation that this is HTTP. I don't want to look into our get and then say ah it's not get so let's get uh, FTP maybe it's FTP okay it's not FTP then to do something else I can do one operation and then I know what what it is. I'm not sure what operation you can do. For example, regex. Regex, Re regex, has, regex and HTTP request detection is completely different, right? It, HTTP request detection is very simple. It starts with get the problem is, and... Yeah, the problem is that when you add more and more and more protocol, you need to do something ah, So one it. nice thing about this thing is that so all the filter functions can be reused. If you have the uh, function, Built a function that detects HTTP, you can actually reuse for for other things. Oh, the only thing that you want you want to change is your your uh, event handler. That's custom action on HTTP requests, right? So so not only the the stack itself is reused. Actually, the filter functions that someone else wrote to detect the generic HTTP request that can be also reused. Okay. I will, I will talk I'll talk. Yeah, I'll talk to you <laughs> later. Any other yeah, so uh, um, my understanding is that this is kind of a bump in the wire. As you said it's a middle box. Uh, it can be uh, operated in inline as well as, okay, you can actually do the uh, copy the, the, uh, by yeah. port uh, port forwarding. Yeah, but I, uh, so uh, as far as I understand, you don't really have endpoints here, right? So, so right, right. So, so, so then why do you need sockets? Oh, this is not TCP socket. So the, the socket 
So if you are familiar with the Ber Berkeley socket, right? Yeah. TCP stream socket. That's an endpoint socket. We create a new, new abstraction, new socket called monitoring socket. <laughs> it's still a socket because there's no other, no better name. And then, but it represents the middle box on viewpoint. It's not the endpoint. It's in the middle, so you can actually see the both sides. Client so side, like at, at, at the bottom of the stack, really, it's just to, to receive the packet, packet reception, transmission kind of thing. Uh, can you say that again? Sorry. Is it uh, like just to receive and transmit the packet from uh, at the bottom of your uh, MOS stack, right? It's just to get the packet into the stack, but then you don't get it to the user. There is no user really, right? It's just... Right. The user is actually a uh, middlebox developer. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's a user. So okay. you want to do, do you want to find for a certain uh, attack pattern? Right? You, if you, if you try to batch against some uh, application logic, so just to determine which application this flow runs on, right? Yeah. So that's the little box that we are writing here, and then using this uh, socket API, it greatly relieves the burden of the uh, writing uh, flow management. Yeah, okay. so you, you also have the, uh, like you mentioned, Suricata and Snort and this uh, uh, IPS IDS yeah, yeah, uh, devices. Uh, do you also have, uh, like on GitHub, the code that is modified to actually uh, use... Modified uh, Snort? Yeah. I, we, do you have modified Snort? Not yet, but we, we may be able to uh, upload it to modified okay. Snort. Okay. But Snort is just our practice whether uh, uh, this actually uh, improves the modularity of the code, not improve the performance itself. Right? So there are actually many work, uh, like Snort work, based on DPDK. Yeah. And you get actually similar performance, but we actually improve the uh, code quality. Okay. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, do you do you have any any other project or uh, is this deployed anywhere? Is this used by any? Uh, actually, we, we wrote many toy applications like Net, and we actually deployed in our lab and used for many months. And then, yeah, I really hope that some of you guys pick up and then uh, okay. work with us and then deploy in the real environment. But actually, it's too slow. <laughs> At the end of the uh, slide, there are two applications. Two, and the, one of the applications is quite interesting, actually. Uh, so yeah, this Mistel is the toy application. But half of that is that it's, it's the middle. It, it's it's pro a proxy, TCP proxy. But it tries to uh, proactive retransmission. So if there is a packet loss, right, there's timeout and it slows down everything. But then this proxy tries to retransmit the packet proactively and it reduces the uh, reduces latency a lot when there is a packet loss. So and we, you can implement this thing with about 100 lines of code. Can, with, uh, can I actually also, implement a TCP proxy using MOS? I'm sure. Can I implement the TCP uh, proxy? TCP proxy can be implemented on top of M MTCP. That's okay. another thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which, which we base on. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, Any. Mike? Um, Mike? Just in case yes, I have a short question. Did you, because on the first slide you, you had a recommend with Suricata? Yeah. Did you try it with Suricata too? Oh, we haven't tried uh, with Suricata. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Folks, we, we just need to keep an eye on time to stay on track, so if you don't mind, you know, you, 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 can, you can definitely approach Professor Park. We're, we're just about to have a break and follow up with any questions. So thank you very much. Thank you very Professor much. Park.